get to know Mike and his heart. And I've heard his story so much more than what he will be able to share with you today. But I know that, Mike, God's been doing a work in you. And so come and tell us part of your story, this fan versus follower. <laughs> and cut eight minutes out of it, right? <laughs> really happy to be here this morning. <clears throat> really happy to convey to you what God is doing in my life. I'll try to give you a kind of a snapshot of where I came from, uh, how I grew up, how that affected me. Um, all those things that brought me here today. I was raised in the church. I, <clears throat> I gave my heart to Jesus, fully aware of my sin and need for a Savior when I was, like, tiny. And, you know, I, I think the ink was still drying on my kindergarten diploma, um, where I did not really excel uh, in kindergarten. I probably got an incomplete. But, um, I was really young, but I knew that I needed a Savior, and I knew that... I needed Jesus in my heart. It was an evangelistic church I grew up in, but it was very legalistic. And uh, being the kind of guy that I was, I was painfully aware of my shortcomings and, uh, and my sin nature, my five-year-old sin nature, uh, that continued to grow and stay with me <laughs> as I grew up. Uh, what I learned through this through this doctrine that I was raised under was that <clears throat> God really loved the perfect people and expected sinless perfection out of me and I also knew that, man, I, I didn't have it. So I began to acquire knowledge as I grew. I mean, we had programs too, you know. We did, I didn't have a vest, I had a little sash, but, um, you know, it, yeah, whatever. <laughs> um, Bible studies and quiz teams and, you know, all these things that uh, were available for me to acquire knowledge. And I think it was assumed that that knowledge would affect my behavior. And this cloak of righteousness that I was weaving for myself um, would eventually affect what was going on inside me. But, um, but it really didn't. What it did was it taught me how to, how to mask what was inside, painfully aware of it, hoping it would change. But in the meantime, I learned how to adopt behavior that I saw going on around me. I, mean, I came of age in the 70s, and, uh, you know, the big Jesus people movement was happening, and, man, it was so groovy to be a Christian. Everybody was a fan of Jesus. Everybody, you know? And you got these big crosses and these big old Bibles and these bell bottoms. And, you know, all the cool things, you know? Um, and all those things were part of the persona that I that I developed and you know and the face that I would put forward but what was happening inside was scary to me I went to college and I, and I majored in in uh, ministerial studies uh, from which I never graduated because I'm classic underachiever but the point was that I thought that I could acquire enough knowledge that eventually what was going on inside me could be healed and changed without anybody knowing it. So I applied myself, and I studied, and I adopted more behavior. And it wasn't really working out for me. And the legalism that I was raised under brought condemnation, like you wouldn't believe, over wh who I really was inside. And when that stuff would come out and people would see it, then I was, man, I was the classic hypocrite, and the reason why people didn't want to be a Christian or be involved in church. So at one point in time, I just told God, I'm sick of this. I'm doing everything I can, and I'm dark and dirty and sinful in my nature, and I don't have the ability to walk in the sinless perfection you called me of, so I quit. Don't call me, and I won't call you, and I'll see you at judgment, because I would rather go to judgment in drunkenness and debauchery and die and go to hell than to live this miserable existence pretending and trying and striving and acquiring this knowledge and this doctrine and everything and still die and go to hell because the darkness in me just wouldn't change. Somewhere in that process of me stepping away and giving up my life, God began to intervene and change. And it's a big, long story. And man, I'd love to tell you all about it. You, 
I'll get you the three volumes when they're completed. Um, <clears throat> but God touched me. And he changed my life. And he proved to me that his love was not about my behavior. His love was not about what I was doing in life or what was inside. His love for me encompassed all that stuff. While I was yet a sinner, he died for me. Why did I need to make these changes within myself so he would accept me when his acceptance was there? So I began to walk in this newness of life and I, and I daily had to peel off the the glaze of religion that had followed me and man, it was a struggle and it, honestly today it's still a struggle but I come to know more and I come to understand more and I come to place more expectations on God and man, he just wasn't always meeting those expectations and things began to transpire in my life that I knew he was God and I knew he was ruler and I knew he was sovereign but I think he could do better than what was happening in my life all that knowledge that I had acquired could not save my first marriage to a person who did not want to have intimacy uh, as far as spiritual oneness. Somebody who did not want the fingerprint of Christ in their life. And I could do nothing about that, and my knowledge could do nothing to change that. And the bitterness that came with that was just, it was just overlaid with failed businesses and job losses and all these things that I had thought that I was trusting God with that turned out to be failures. And I came to a point where I just didn't deny God. I didn't, didn't walk away. I just, just didn't want to be involved anymore. I mean, I wanted to be part, but I wanted to kind of sit back in the back. And probably the reason why I've been here a year, and you guys are going, who is that guy? Have you seen him? Well, it might be part of that. I just... I didn't want to trust. I knew he was going to do what he was going to do. I knew he was God. I knew he was sovereign. And I'm just going to let him work his stuff out and not place any expectation that's not going to be met. When I started talking with uh, Pastor Mark when he started this Space Down series, and I said, you know, man, there, I, don't really, I don't really want to get deeply involved in this prayer thing because it ends badly for me on regular <laughs> occasions. Um, <clears throat> And then he goes, man, he goes from that into this all-in thing and talking about reaching out to the community. And I go, man, it's just not in me, really. They're, I don't care. I mean, I love people, and God has done a work in my heart. And you get to know me, you, you realize I really like you guys. But there are people out there that, that I think should just go to hell. Right? <laughs> and I, I talked to one of my friends. I, I won't tell you who it was because... Kirk can give his own confession on this stuff. But, and he kind of agreed with me. He understood that. But I went face down. And I said, God, I, I want to trust you. And I want to enter in. And I want to be all in. And I don't want to stand back and just watch what you're going to do and say, okay, yeah, that's, that's good, whatever, whatever. Um, because I had come to that point where all the disappointments in my life were met with yeah, whatever. I, he, great job, it's gone. Yeah, okay, whatever. You know, a good friend dies of cancer when you pray for him, spe you know, specifically, and you just go, whatever. My wife is stricken with cancer. Right about the time that I'm losing a job on my insurance, and I'm going, whatever, what in, what do you, how do you, I don't know how to pray for her, but, I mean, I want to pray for healing, but, I don't know your mind. I, what's this all about? You just, whatever. Just, just do what you want to do. And I'll just learn to pick up the pieces and go with the consequences. Well, God healed my wife. And I am eternally grateful. But he began to do some healing in me too. And, and my prayers became not about me and my failure and my direction and my unemployment. It became about learning how this knowledge that I know about him applies to who I know inside me. And it has been miraculous. It has been a wonderful, wonderful thing. And 
for the first time in my Christian walk, I swear to you that joy has come into my life and it is a newness that I never knew was available. It has been phenomenal. You know, and all, and all my, yeah, whatever, you just do whatever has turned into, whatever, you hit me with it all. I don't care. Because I know that you are the sovereign God and I know that your hand is on me and though you slay me, yet will I trust you. Man, I love that. I love that. He gives me this job. I'm going, yeah, okay, whatever. I'll take it. It's a hideous job. It's brutal. It's hard. I'm an old guy. I'm young guys who are got all this, you know, strength and vigor, and I'm just like plodding along, and I'm going, whatever, man. Whatever. You just bring it. You could take it tomorrow. Whatever. I'm good. So all that pharisaical knowledge that I had acquired means nothing if he's not using it, if it's not at work in my life. And I'm here, to, I'm here to tell you this morning that what I want in my life is to be the ointment poured from the alabaster box onto the feet of my Savior. And let the perfume of his presence and who he is fill my life and fill the room and fill the people that I am in contact with because I'm Mike Summers, and I am not a fan.